This video is sponsored by Titanforge. So guys, over January, you've seen me put together two armies over a week, over a few hours. And I paint to that standard with every army that I've done. I just sort of knock it all out and I like to see it done on a table in a group. Okay, so it's like it looks okay all together. The reason I paint things to that sort of standard is at some point, once I've got my army dialed in and I'm happy with it, I will take it up to the next level. But what is that next level? And how far do you take it? When do you stop painting? When, when is enough enough? When do you quit? See what I did there? Pure clickbait, innit? <laughs> but anyway, guys, let's paint these models up to a basic standard. And then let's see how far we can go before it's just pointless. I'll see you in a sec. So with base coats, I try and find the most efficient way of doing it I can to suit the model. Recently I've been using a lot of speed paints and contrast because I find that when you throw these base colours down it does the low light and mid light for you. However, speed paints and contrast paints tend to be pretty bright. Now I see this as a positive because if I was painting like the old fashioned way, base coating, I would always paint things a lot brighter because I'm going to be washing them down later. The benefit to painting with contrast or speed paints is you can get your base coats on there quite sloppily. And then later when you actually come in there and just wash everything down, it ties all them slips and misses in and it also takes the colour down a bit and desaturates it a bit which makes the colours look a lot more muted and a bit more natural, ready for the next step. Which is my favourite creamy glaze. It's not perfect, but what you're doing is you're getting like a pale sand or a cream colour and you're just dry brushing that all over the model because fantasy models tend to be greens, browns, reds, all on the brown spectrum. And it just catches the highlights. This is my favourite way of speed painting, just so they look okay at arm's length. It's not something I'd advise for competition painting, but if you're painting some models like 20 minutes before you're leaving to take them to a D&D &D session, or you need a character to take to the club that evening, this is what I do. I just get them done, a quick highlight, so they look good on the table. Now for a quick 20 minutes a model standard, I'm very happy with these and I've got to hold that compliment to these models. These models are from Titan Forge Miniatures who sponsored this video. So let's tell you a bit more about them. Titan Forge are offering high quality STL files for you to print at home. They offer two separate ranges covering both fantasy and sci-fi settings. So there's something for everyone. The models all come pre-supported and as you can see from this video, offer some amazing detail for painting and gaming. All of the STL files are available for individual purchase, but they're also available as part of their tribe or patron campaigns. If you want to grab both of them, you can even get them in an all-in package where you get both the ranges at a discounted rate. All the models in this video are from their March release, the Badland Orcs which are perfect for D&D encounters or any other tabletop game. This pack contains a load of miniatures for you to print and paint, and if you sign up you'll also get the welcome pack and the RPG pack, which is perfect for role playing games. Each tier is $10 a month, and the all in pack is $18 a month. Thanks Titan Forge for sponsoring this video and supporting content creators. Now, back to the video. So guys, that's where I call like my basic tabletop standard. You've seen me make models like this all the time. Base colours, wash, dry brush with a cream, cream of glaze over the top of them all. And that's what I'd do if I were taking them to a D&D &D game at the end of the night, or if, if I needed to paint some up quick for a, a character model for a game that we're taking to the club, uh, like the night before I'd spend 20 minutes. I've literally spent an hour on all three models, which is 20 minutes a model. So next step is Let's do some layering. Let's see how far we can take them from this in possibly another hour uh, and see how much better they look just by spending an extra 20 minutes in each model. Uh, and we'll see whether that'll carry. So the second step after just basic painting, I paint the large areas of the models, the bit that stand out the most, which obviously is the skin. What I do is I, get, I mix up some greens uh, and then I start layering that up. 
using that dry brush as a bit of a reference. But what I also do is I mix in a bit of the cream that I use to dry brush in with the green, just to tie that in with the highlight. And I don't spend too long, I just take it up an extra layer or two, putting less and less paint on the higher areas. And then I focus on the second largest area, which is all the bone details and the flag. And I, I paint the cream on and I add a little bit of white into that each time and just highlight it toward the top. What we're doing here is, is just literally selecting the, the key features of the models and painting them because when people look at these on the table, it's them bits that stand out. So I'm paying more attention to the key parts rather than the little details that nobody can see at arm's length. And this way you can get a better looking model in a shorter space of time. And a great example of this is the capes. The dry brush over the red wasn't the nicest, but going back in there with just a very thinned red, the highlight put in by the dry brush actually helps the red carry and look a lot more natural. I do mix in two or three different reds and I keep adding orange to this to keep layering and bringing the highlight up. And I do put quite a lot of paint on there and I just move it around till it blends in smoothly. And this is why I use the Army Painter airbrush paints for this because they are very transparent. And when you're painting this by brush, it just makes transitions very simple to do. And all you've got to do with red is just add a little bit of orange each time to highlight it up. And that desaturates it a little bit as well, which is nice. The one last thing that I do which doesn't take much time at all is any sort of deep recess of the model like on its chest or any areas that you can't really see the details as such like beards and things I go in there and I drop some black washing and this just to add a bit more contrast to the model and a bit more depth so again when it's on the table the highlights are considerably higher than the deeper parts of the recesses in the model and adding that wash takes no time at all and it makes a massive difference. Now for an extra 20 minutes a model, they're looking a hell of a lot better. The blends on the skin, the metallics on the weaponry, just them extra bit of details like adding that wash into the recesses, just adds so much more definition to the models and it's definitely worth an extra 20 minutes and 40 minutes a model, it's not really a long time is it? So that's another hour of painting. So I think we're at about 40 minutes a model now. Um, this is where I'd normally leave them if I were painting models for an army because of the sheer volume. But I don't think they'll need much more to get a lot more out of the model. And this is what this video is going to find out. How much more time do we have to put in to make the model look 10 times better again? So let's start edge highlighting, let's start doing a lot of techniques that I don't normally do and uh, let's see how much better they actually do look in the end. Now one thing I want to mention just before I carry on, I bought a load of synthetic Raphael brushes uh, because I needed some decent synthetic brushes for at work and they was literally falling apart while I was using them. This is literally the first time I've used them, I've just opened the pack and used them and I'm not impressed. Some of the new brushes were already hooked um, so yeah, they didn't affect the paint job a little bit. But anyway, what I did was is I added a bit more cream to all the little details on the models. So highlighting up the bones, I even painted in the teeth. I highlighted up the cheeks and nose just just with little dots just to show the higher highlights, things that I wouldn't normally do. This takes a little bit of time going in there and dotting in these bits of color. But again, it's a nice bright highlight that your eyes catch. The faces, again, are one of the most important parts of the model. So if you are gonna put extra time into the models, put it on the face. Then after that, I just go around using the cream on like knuckles, just putting lines of cream on like highest parts of flesh just to show a bit of detail and the highlights of the flesh. Now, this is not something I'd usually do. These are bits that take a little bit of time to paint, but it's all the little details that are quite hard to see on the tabletop. So I paint them with like a, a black grey, so like all the straps holding the skulls on, any sort of little straps around the boots, just things that I normally just put a wash on and they're done. But with this I'm going in there and painting some solid contrast of colour, 
and paint inside the mouth which again is something that I normally just throw a wash in and then going around models just adding different colours to break up the colours on the model so I'm not using one or two colours over and over again I introduce new colours that I've not used before so adding whites and blues to like the shaman it just makes the more details pop there's more colour there's more interesting things to look at and I spent an extra two hours painting these models to get them to the better standard and I must admit it adds a lot more visual interest to the models and I will add some of these steps from this third step into my second step just to improve the overall look of my models and to improve your models you can't get away without not basing them so all I'm going to do is just give them a quick base with base ready patch of planes from my range just by sticking some basing glue on there dipping it in and they're done now they look so much better do the models but this is about an hour and a half a model if not more on some of the bigger ones and it is a lot nicer however i'd leave this to just character models and maybe front ranks or officers of that rank i wouldn't be doing this to 60 models at once but it does make a massive difference putting that extra bit of time in there I wonder how much better they'd look with another two hours spend on them. But this is as far as I'd take a model, especially when you're army painting. So guys, spending quite a lot of time painting these now, as in that were an extra hour and a half, um, two hours possibly, painting and basing them. Um, that extra difference, I don't know whether I'd go all that way if I were doing like an army of them, but definitely for like character models, individuals, and maybe like some on the front ranks. But there is a noticeable difference every time. I'd think for me, when I'm army painting, I'll still go for the base, wash, creamy glaze, few little highlights. Taking it past that on every model, if you've got like 40, 50, 60 of them, I'd blow my brains out. So I think, just sticking to that and keeping to your character models is the best bet. What do you do and what do you think? Are you one of these people that will literally sit and paint every model to the best of your ability? If so, can you put some pointers below of how you do that? <laughs> or how, do, how long does it actually take you to finish an army? Me, I don't like to spend more than two weeks on an army or I lose interest and move on to something else. So this is why I paint like this. And then if I ever want to take my models to a next step, I know it's only going to be an extra couple of hours for a, a group of models. And uh, it's a nice thing to do. If you've got run out of things to do, grab an army off a shelf and paint it to a better standard. So guys, I'd like to thank Titan Forge for sponsoring this video. They've got some absolutely gorgeous models. These orcs are going to be used at some point in the future as well. Um, I've already started printing off the Wyvern uh, because it's is pretty epic um so all the links to titan forge below and even if you like sci-fi stuff as well they have a cyber forge things check all that as well guys so thank you for titan forge for sponsoring us youtubers if you wanted to buy any of the materials used in this video there's links to element games below and grim dice and also if you want to buy any of the scenics like the basic materials and things like that i've used in the video check out geek gaming scenics whether that's at a local shop or whether that's with me direct well, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and I'll uh, catch you again for the next video. Love, love, love.